Let's say overnight you become the head or director of data at a 500 to 1000 person company. How would you start? Especially if they've never had a data person before, where do you even begin? I've had this conversation a few times with Ethan Aaron. In fact, I've written an article with him in the past and he keeps putting out amazing posts kind of talking about this specific topic because he has done exactly just this when he worked, I believe, at LiveRamp. And so I really enjoyed this post and I want to kind of go through some of it as well as talk through kind of why I agree with a lot of what he said and how you, if you ever get placed into the role of being a director or head of data, should approach the problem. So if you are the very first director or head of data, you know, you're the person in charge, the first thing you need to do is not go out and build a ton of infrastructure, right? You don't want to be building when you don't know what you're building. You need to first assess essentially where you are, figure out where your company needs to go and how you're going to get there, right? The middle is the part you don't know. You generally need to figure out kind of where you are. You can kind of figure out where people want to be. Um, and then the middle is the fun part where you can figure out how to do that. Now, uh, Evan's post, but if we go through it, I love the fact that he says, you know, in week one, schedule a meeting with everyone in, in the C-suite. Because when you first get started, you should really be talking to a ton of people, right? And getting immediately connected with the C-suite is great because you are the head of data. You're going to be serving them one way or the other, whether it's the CMO, uh, the COO, whoever it is, you need to figure out who your partner is really going to be, who's going to be uh, one of your main backers, essentially, and who's going to be making decisions off this data. You're then going to work with each of them to figure out, hey, what are the problems? What are the questions that you currently can't answer? You can talk about this broadly. You don't have to make it focused on data because if you talk about it broadly, more and more data issues will come up. As you're talking, it's going to be like the classic five whys where you talk about one problem and you can keep kind of drilling into those problems. One example I've kind of seen is like, let's say the reason the food is delayed at a restaurant at the very end is because, you know, the chef's not cooking. Why is the chef not cooking? Because there's no plates, because um, we don't have enough plates, they're dirty, etc. Um, so you keep drilling into the why and eventually figure it out. And then you can ask, uh, based on those questions, uh, he had a little point here where he says, figure out if it's already being answered manually, uh, or if there's an automated version, or uh, if there's no answer to the question at all. And again, your very first month, you're going to just be spending time assessing what exists, right? Maybe you talk to the C-suite, maybe you talk to some of the other directors. You want to understand the lay of the land, which leads you to the next week, which is in week two, where now that you have an idea kind of what problems exist, you can start understanding where data could exist and what business applications exist. So you can go to the IT team and be like, hey, what applications are we, do we have? Uh, what databases do we have? Because then you can start understanding of these, you know, dozens of questions that I've put together or dozen or two, which ones can we even answer? Do we have data to answer those questions? And you can't answer that if you don't know what data exists. Also, as you're doing this, it's a good idea to maybe talk to the other teams. Like there's probably someone on the marketing teams or someone on the sales team that has a list of KPIs. And you're gonna go find all of the KPIs that they're currently maintaining. Truthfully, this might be a little bit slower. Um, sometimes you wanna get access to someone, they're busy, especially the C-suite. It might've taken you till week two to really talk to them, but it gives you a good flow. But by the end of week two or week three, at this point, you have a good understanding of what problems exist, what data exists. And now you need to start understanding if I take all of these things, where do I start, right? So you can now in week three, start listing out all these initiatives that you have. You've talked to a bunch of uh, the C-suite. As Ethan points out, if you talk to seven people, that's about 21 uh, initiatives. You can't take on 21 initiatives all at once. So you need to start now listing out what is the benefit and what is the general business value of each of these initiatives, right? Uh, get a quote from your C-suite and maybe try to figure it out yourself as well. Try to dive into what is the value and then tie uh, now that you have this list of data as well from the prior week of, from all the databases, figure out which data sets essentially would be able to be used for each of these problems. Now in week four, you can start building out a very basic uh, data infrastructure. Now he says build a data warehouse uh, in week four, and he kind of hints at that being one week. I don't think you could build a whole amazing data warehouse that's like perfectly data modeled in a week, but you can start putting the foundation for your first or second problem just to get an initial win. Again, you always need to be careful when you build things quickly, because if you build something very quickly where you just dump data into your data warehouse and then build a report on top of it, you definitely risk approaching things with query-driven modeling approach, which I've written a whole article about query-driven modeling. It can work initially, but eventually you just build one pipeline for every ad hoc ask. So this section, I, I you can take a little more time, I think, but it is important to at least start 
delivering something that looks like a report in the next few weeks. Now, also digging into week four, uh, he references picking not just a data warehouse solution, but also a data visualization solution and some level of like ETL or EL tool that kind of pulls that data. And most of this doesn't have to be expensive. You do not need a fancy BI tool when you're first starting. There are tons of free options or at least cheaper options like Metabase. Eventually, if you decide to go down the Tableau or some other option like Power BI, you can do that. But early on, you're just trying to deliver initial value. Uh, and then you can start getting eventually budget to purchase more expensive solutions. Similarly, most data warehouses have a free tier or some level of free tier. So you're just getting started and you're just trying to prove value that, hey, I can take a list of initiatives and actually pick which ones you need and then deliver. And then by week five or six, you're likely able to actually hand these reports to the C-suite and have them look at them and tell you and give you feedback and say, hey, this is right. This is wrong. This is what we'd like to improve. And that's great. You can start quickly iterating on this. And also, I love that he pointed out that if for any reason they are like, oh, we actually have a new focus. We're actually focusing on something else. Great. Now you can take that and be like, all right, how can I put this initiative into my list? And let's focus on that. Now, there's a ton of nuance even there where, you know, you don't want to be playing too much whack-a-mole where it's like every week you take on a different problem. And if your c suite is taking on a different initiative every few weeks, that's a different problem that you need to discuss and probably try to help them re- focus because you can only do so much and adapt so quickly to data but i love this kind of quick you know month month and a half guide to just like really trying to go from zero to 100 uh, very quickly especially if you're a head of data who's getting paid 200 to 250k you need to deliver value quickly and eventually then again find that balance of building better data infrastructure improving your data modeling but first often you have to prove the value that data has and then once you have that, people will generally want to put more budget into what you're doing. As Ethan points out at the very end, the real goal in this whole process is to understand your business partners, help build trust with them and the data, and then help them solve the highest value problems, right? Because if you solve those problems, then they're going to be, you know, happy and then more excited for the next uh, project or the bigger project that you bring to them, right? They're going to be more excited. They're going to be more into digging into this data. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how, if you're just starting as a director of data of a smaller company, how you can start getting wins quickly so that you can continue on to bigger and better projects. With that, guys, good luck and thank you. Have a great day. Bye.